very warm welcome to Nadine Hönighaus. Hello, Nadine. Hello, thank you so much for this uh, kind introduction and uh, for having me in this amazing conference. Uh, maybe just to check before I uh, start with my presentation, can you hear and see me properly? If I do not hear anyone rejecting, I suppose everything is fine and has been um, organized perfectly by the organizing team. Thank you so much. We do have a 20-minute uh, slot uh, now to shed some light onto the regulation on sustainability reporting. And things have been mentioned already. I had the chance to listen a bit to uh, the conversation between Thomas and Desiree. Thank you so much for that. But maybe to provide you also for the next panel discussion with some background on the regulation on sustainability reporting, um, I would like to share some information slides with you. Maybe before um, it concerns, we are a network uh, for business for companies. We are the German network of the large multinational companies that um, connect, uh, are connected to each other on sustainability to really advance sustainability in their own operations and beyond. And we also started um, an amazing new initiative that is rapidly growing um, for um, smaller companies so for that, please do check out our website on um, if you like to uh, get in touch with peers on sustainability and advance. So about um, the sustainability reporting, um, the CSRD, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive is the EU directive um, not really fully in place yet, but still in a draft version being discussed that will really change um, the, the way how companies report on all sustainability um, information fundamentally. I remember when we as a network, when the first um, uh, signs came from the European Union that they intended to uh, really make sustainability reporting more transparent, more comparable, more reliable, that we really as a network welcomed this uh, initiative with the clear goal that sustainability information is raised and upgraded to the level of financial information because it is not less severe and important to know when it comes to the future development opportunities and risks of a company, then uh, financial information give us a background on. What do we look at? Why do, is sustainability reporting um, so um, uh, essential? First, it is needed to evaluate risks and opportunities, not only for investors, but I mean, first priority investors, but other stakeholder groups as well. By knowing about sustainability, the full E environmental S social and governance picture of company, um, investors can clearly see risks and opportunities of potential assets. They can, um, this makes, help them draw conclusion on the financial performance of companies and future financial uh, performance. From a policy perspective, um, of course, and not only from an investors, but also particularly from a policy perspective, it is very interesting to tackle sustainability reporting and to standardize it because as an effect of companies being transparent on sustainability, this, of course, will change also the way business is done entirely. Policymakers hope to encourage companies to develop a responsible approach to business through clearly defining disclosure requirements, defining what they want to see in order that companies will do that in the end. We have had regulation on sustainability in place, which, not, which has not always fulfilled um, all stakeholders' needs. Um, the, past sustainability reporting has been criticized for lacking quality, for not um, having uh, the right scope being too narrow, for not being uh, 
um, sufficiently reliable and particularly comparable. So that is how the EU started off to define um, how they want to have sustainable companies report on sustainability in the future. We already do see today that sustainability reporting of companies that are obliged to report on sustainability. There are many more companies that do that on a voluntary basis, but the ones that are obliged to do that, do that in different forms. You will find, hold on, I think I switched back. Now it should be right. Uh, you will find um, sustainability information being as uh, integrated in a separate sustainability report from the management report. So you will have the financial management report of a company and separately either maybe being released at the same moment or maybe also at another time publish a, uh, a, a published sustainability report. We do see forums where um, the sustainability section is a separate chapter within the management report. So automatically you have both information at the same time, but in two separate chapters. And for many of our member companies, um, this is increasingly the case, you will find companies that really fully integrate the sustainability information into their management report. At the moment where this is not really so clearly um, defined by legislation, by policymakers, we really do see all different forms of reporting on the market out there. There is one key concept on reporting that is essential uh, to get also to get the different uh, when it comes to the different approaches on um, publishing sustainability information. And that is the concept of materiality and double materiality. Maybe um, on the materiality, um, a company's beginning of strategy, reporting on strategy, uh, definition of goals and targets in between is their own materiality assessment. Meaning that a company really does a clear analysis on what are, not what are the interesting topics to a company, but what are the material topics? What are the topics that they really should prioritize in addressing when it comes to advancing sustainability approaches? We do have two different concepts um, of materiality we find in upcoming legislation. On the left hand uh, side of my chart, you will find the concept of financial materiality. These are, for example, if you look at climate, all sustainability issues that have an impact on the company itself, that have a financial impact on companies. This is the perspective that is taken on an international level. Uh, we learned that um, the IFRS Foundation are also currently working on sustainability reporting standards. There is one, um, the ISSB, the um, uh, International Sustainability Standards Board of um, the IFRS Foundation currently growing and being established mainly in Frankfurt is focusing on the financial materiality side of sustainability. However, maybe not on the contrary, but in addition, the EU with their regulation on sustainability reporting is talking about the double materiality concept and adding the so-called impact materiality to their view. Impact materiality asks companies not only to, to look at topics relevant to them from an outside in, so what is relevant for the financial development of my company and the business model, but also from an inside out perspective. Um, and it addresses a far larger group um, of uh, stakeholders. Uh, we look at consumers, at civil society, at employees and at investors. And the company should also consider in their materiality assessment, the topics where they, with their business model, um, with their geographical location, with uh, their supply chains, have a severe impact on the outside world. 
We do see and we can imagine that for internationally operating companies that consider IFA as uh, reporting as well as EU reporting at the same time, these two perspectives might impose also a challenge in bringing them together in their one single global management report. But maybe we can uh, dive a bit deeper into that um, in uh, the discussion afterwards. My next slide shows the so-called alphabet soup. We have that in the sustainability community. You don't need to read all the details of the standards we have put you on one slide, but mandatory regulation as we will face it now and the EU as the IFRS, at least as a principle, will define as the SAC is working on, is something that is not starting from scratch. I think this is very um, uh, important to bear in mind that um, formally what has been um, uh, um, voluntary reporting standards have really fed their intelligence, their experiences in the, into the different now soon to be mandatory reporting standards. Among the most important to mention, particularly when companies operate on an international level are definitely the TCFD, the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosure that came from the G20 um, process and really is feeding as well into the EU um, legislation with the CRD as well as the ISSB um, regulation and the SEC disclosures. We also have the Global Reporting Initiative covering all ESG topics um, being a very important reference point for the task forces and experts working on these standards as well as SASB, the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, and the Value Reporting Foundation that uh, both feed particularly into the ISSB. We do have the Greenhouse Gas Protocol as being really the standard on disclosure on climate, CDP also um, focusing on climate and water and forests and supply chain, and we do print, have principles based the UN Global Compact um, that is particularly also feeding with the SDGs, with the UN SDGs, um, a lot of information into um, the social side um, of the reporting standards. Do we need to know these standards all in um, detail? I think for some companies, really, this is the case. Um, even if I picture the future of the year 2025, where we will have reporting standards for the EU in place for a considerable amount of time, companies will have to consider parallel standards that are come together and already today companies do um, publish that like as a matrix um, so that uh, the user, the reader, knows where to find the different information relating to the different standards. On the EU level now, to prepare the standards, uh, we have three major parts of regulation that had been mentioned before. I will do that a bit shorter. This is the SFDR, the disclosure framework already in place, already uh, legally binding and mandatory for financial market participants in particular, who have guidance on what they will need to cover in their disclosure on E and S and G topics to make um, their sustainability risks and impacts in their investment processes and in their financial products uh, visible to a regulatory institutions but as well as to consumers. So the financial market participants went first. What is uh, there to follow? Maybe we switch to the right hand side first. The taxonomy regulation, the EU Sustainable Finance Action Plan with their reporting requirements for all undertakings already covered, now mandatory by sustainability reporting moved second. They have defined already six environmental topics and companies uh, were required to report on three KPIs, how they contribute to this uh, six environmental topics, that is turnover, capex, and opex. 
they first in the last cycle reported on how many of their activities were eligible to the taxonomy. And for uh, this year, there will be the alignment reporting on the taxonomy following. In the future, this will all feel, feed into the CSRD, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directors a directive that also really has the full-fledged ESG disclosure topics um, for the companies, a lot more detailed, um, a lot more precise than we already now find it in the existing regulation, the NFRD, the Non-Financial Reporting Directive. We maybe uh, to show you some details on what the CSRD will be asking and uh, what we will be looking at um, the following chart. It will, uh, in scope of the CSRD, will be all large companies um, as defined by the accounting directive that have more than 250 employees, um, more than 40 million turnover, whether they are listed or not. Um, that is the specific difference to the scope of today's directive, the NFRD. Just to give you some numbers on that, today companies in Europe, there are about 11,000 companies that are amended, that are um, obliged to report on sustainability. And in the future, we will have close to 50,000 companies in Europe. So there is a large, uh, a larger number of companies that will have to face sustainability reporting for the first time. Um, the directive also includes listed SMEs and um, at a later stage then non-European companies that generate a net turnover over 150 million in the EU and with at least one subsidiary here. We will have an implementation in steps. The first companies that are re um, will report on the CSRD are the ones that are already reporting on sustainability now, that are already in scope of the NFRD um, for the financial year 2024, so for the reports that will be prepared in the year 2025, and the other um, companies will follow the years further on. Maybe a few more essential points on the CSRD. Sorry, did I hear something? Did anybody want to say something? I'm almost done. <laughs> Um, the sustainability reporting, and that goes to the reliability of data, uh, will have uh, to be audited at the first stage with limited assurance, um, uh, on the second level prospectively also with reasonable assurance, and the EU standards for these audits uh, shall be developed by October 2028 as the current timeline foresees. Um, we will have a reporting level for companies um, on a group level with some exceptions. Um, and um, it is currently defined that the reporting has to take place as a separate section of the management report. What is really entirely new about that uh, CSRD reporting is that at the same time the EU is developing a full-fledged set of cross-sector standards that cover all sections E, S, and G. To give you a glimpse on what the draft of these standards currently looks like, you have cross-cutting standards um, on general principles and general strategy and uh, governance um, that can, kind of are underlying. Um, you have standards on environment, on social and on governance uh, in particular. Altogether, we have 13 standards and uh, what we see, the draft is on its way to the EU Commission. There was a, an expert task force, the EFRAC, that has developed um, these draft standards in months of impressive work. And in November, the European Commission is receiving these standards internally thinking, starting political process, and they're expected to be published um, and uh, released some point um, in Q2 next year. At least this is the current information. Maybe um, so that we're not only stuck on the EU as a last sentence uh, at the same time, 
the um, ISSB, I'm sorry, is working for an international level on um, reporting standards covering governance, strategy, risk management, targets and metrics, and in the future also industry-specific requirements that are based on SASB. And uh, he also, the first draft standards uh, published on general requirements and climate-related disclosures. And um, we are expecting now that almost the board is complete soon to learn more about the details on those standards. If you are kind of um, getting irritated by the fact why we're doing this all together at the same time, somehow a bit competing as it might seem, um, we can at least calm you in a way that there is a jurisdictional working group between ISSB and also the EU level, also inviting um, the US with SEC standards and other jurisdictions to really make sure in a way um, that the information is at least compatible, that companies do not have, that operate internationally, do not have to fill all different kinds of bits and pieces of standards, but somehow get into a situation where with one report and in the end, a company ideally would have one report on a global level, um, the different needs and uh, requirements for the standards uh, can be matched. This would also be my personal hope for, and I'm happy to take that into uh, the discussion. Thank you very much for your attention.